Hello everyone, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Rachel and welcome to my Zodiac Academy reading vlog. I am so, so excited to be making this reading vlog. I feel like this is going to be my favorite reading vlog I've ever made because I am reading the Zodiac Academy series by Caroline Peckham and Suzanne Valenti. So I actually read the first and second book of the Zodiac Academy series early in April and I did ask you guys on the community page if you would be interested in seeing a full Zodiac Academy reading vlog for books three, four, five, six, and seven, and the overwhelming majority did say yes. So I will not be reading the entire series in this book. I will give you guys my thoughts on books one and two in a second, and then the rest of the vlog will be me actively reading the rest of the books in the series that are out. So the Zodiac Academy series is a bully fantasy romance series that follows twins Tori and Darcy Vega. They have grown up in Chicago, they are orphans, and they've had a very, very rough life. And one day, a mysterious man comes to them and says, hey, you guys need to come with me to the Zodiac Academy. You are are actually the heirs to a fae throne in another realm called Solaria. You need to come to the school, hone your magical powers, learn your skills, and just come back to where you came from. The twins are very, very curious about this and a little bit wary, but they kind of have nothing to lose, so they go with him. Once they get to the Zodiac Academy, they are met by the four celestial heirs in their absence and in their parents' absence who tragically died in a fire when they were very young. There have been four celestial heirs who have been raised and kind of primed to take over the throne in the Vega twins' absence, but now that the twins are here, people are wondering, are they going to take the thrones? And these four celestial heirs are going to do everything in their power to make these girls leave Zodiac Academy, leave Solaria, and never take the throne. As I said, this is a fantasy bully romance, heavy on the bully romance part. I do just want to say this right out front. This series is not for everyone, so just something to be aware of. I have really enjoyed the first two books in the series thus far, and I'm excited to read the rest of them. Okay, so let's talk about my thoughts on the first book. This is Zodiac Academy The Awakening. I went into this book with low expectations because people say that the first book is definitely the weakest in the writing, in the plot, in everything, and a lot of people don't like this book, and I was just kind of going in like, okay, I'll see what happens. I personally loved this book. I gave this book four stars. I do understand what people are saying when they say that the writing is cringy. It just didn't really bother me though because the plot is so like action-packed and heavy and very, very interesting that I just didn't care. It didn't really bother me. I've sort of got used to the cringy writing at this point and I'm enjoying my time with it. So I really, really loved this book. There were definitely some shocking bully aspects, but this book definitely made me fall in love with Tori and Darcy and we got to meet some of their newer friends and got to see some really ugly sides of the heirs and I, I pretty much hated them all at this point. This book does end in a very shocking way and definitely makes you want to pick up the second book. So then I read the second book, Ruthless Fae, and what I love about this book series is each book is left kind of in a cliffhanger and we immediately pick up right where we left off. So in this book, we do see Darcy and Tori sort of stand up to the heirs and start to find their way more in Solaria and at the Zodiac Academy. I really loved this book and I ended up giving it five stars. So my first five star of the series. We do also start to get multiple POVs in this book, which I think really, really helps the story progress in a really interesting way. And it does sort of help you understand the heirs and other characters. It doesn't make you forgive what they've done. It doesn't make it okay, but you do start to understand where they're coming from. They were raised very differently than Darcy and Tori were, and it just kind of opens your eyes a little bit, but just a little bit. But I did really, really enjoy this book. It got me heavily invested. It ended crazily, of course, and I loved it. All right, so it is now time to move on to book three, The Reckoning. This is where the official sort of reading vlog starts, uh, but I hope you guys enjoy, and I'll talk to you guys soon. Hi, guys. Okay, so first reading update for the third book in the Zodiac Academy. It's going so good. It's going so good. I started this last night, and I am already 50% of the way done. I definitely think I'm going to finish it today. I'm actually listening to the audiobook for this one. I didn't listen to the audiobook for the first two books, but I just wanted to try them out and see how I liked them. And I really, really enjoy the audiobooks. I definitely recommend them. I only have four hours left. So I definitely think I will finish it today. And I just can't wait. This book is like perfect. Like I don't know. I don't even know how to rate this book because it's going to be a five star, obviously. But I gave the last book five star and I loved it. Like I loved Ruthless Fae. But this is like... I don't even, I don't even know. I don't know. It's, it's a six, seven, eight, nine star, 10 star book. Honestly, I'm loving it so, so much. There's so many amazing things happening in this book, particularly we've had a lot of relationship development and just like the dynamics between characters have developed. Chapter 13, chapter 13, if you've read this book, I was screaming. I was literally screaming. I mean, not literally. I was in Target when I was listening to that chapter and I just like stopped in the aisle and I was like, oh my God, 
this is happening. This is really happening. And then it happened. Oh my God, I'm, I'm dead. I'm absolutely dead. I'm very scared that that situation is not going to always be positive because uh, obviously there's a lot of issues surrounding that, but oh my God, I love them so much. We are also getting the answers to some very big questions that we've had pretty much since the beginning of the series and I need to know. I assume those things are going to be revealed in this book, but I haven't got there yet and I'm just dying to know. But yeah, this is absolutely my favorite in the series so far. I messaged Hannah and I was like, hey, uh, sorry to bother you, but I just need to scream about this book. And then in all caps, I was just like, this book is so good. This is my favorite in the series. Series. like I I can't handle it it's just oh my god everything that's happening in this book is so much fun and I know that I'm pretty sure Hannah said that book three is her favorite of the series along with book five and she and I have very similar taste in books so I do think that I'm going to love this one just as much as she did it's just so good I'm having so much fun it's probably like the most fun book series I've ever read I feel like, like I'm just having a good time. I'm just having a good time, you know? I definitely think I'm going to finish it today, which is great. It's Monday, so I'm starting off the week. Very good, finishing a book, and then I'm immediately going to start Shadow Princess, which is the fourth book, and I'm very, very nervous for that one because I think some like bad stuff is gonna happen in that book from what I've seen of how other people have talked about it. I will definitely check in with you guys when I have finished this beauty and let you know my final thoughts, my final rating. Who knows? Maybe something crazy will happen and I won't give it a five star, but I would be absolutely absolutely shocked if that happened but i will talk to you guys soon hi guys <laughs> i just wanted to do a really like just a little quick reading uh update i wasn't planning to update before i finished the book but oh my gosh this book is so the series is so like I have whiplash, you know what I mean? In the last clip, I was like, oh yeah, it seems like, you know, some characters are starting to get along and like things are going well and that, and you know, in that situation, they're not, they are not. Something just happened that has just absolutely set back all of the progression in that area. Oh my God. It just, uh, it's so, it's so painful. This series is so painful. Like, and I get it, it's an eight series of books. So I know that things aren't gonna be like kichi keen for a while, I assume. I don't think we're getting any happily ever afters like anytime soon, but come on, come on. Oh my God, Jesus. Okay, anyway, that's my update. That is my update for this. Uh, this is a little uh, heartbreaker right here. I just know that this is going to be a pattern. Yeah, it sucks. <laughs> so anyway, still loving it though. Still wanna give it like all the stars possible, but I will check in with you guys once I have finished this book. Hello guys. So it has been a few days since I have checked in with you. I have been reading though. I just haven't been able to pick up the camera in a few days just because life. But I have very exciting reading updates for the Zodiac Academy. So I finished The Reckoning on Monday, which is I think the last time I checked in with you guys. I finished it that night. So good. This is my favorite in the series so far. This was the best. This just had so many great elements and so many things going for it. I... Ugh. The ending. The ending of this book was so shocking and so incredible and I just, I loved it. I absolutely loved it. We got some questions answered that we have had since the beginning of the book, so that was exciting. Crazy. Such a shock. Did not expect that. And we also uh, introduced another plot line <laughs> that is kind of bad and God only knows where the story is going now. So I loved this one. Definitely my favorite of the series thus far. So far I would rank the series 3, 2, 1. They're all great. They're all so, so good but this has definitely been my favorite so far. And then I pretty much immediately started Shadow Princess, which is the fourth book. And I'm actually like 65% of the way done with this book. So I've kind of been barreling through this and haven't checked in, but it's been really, really great. I'm really loving it. Obviously the aftermath of things that kind of happened at the end of book three are taking place now in book four. And it's been really, really crazy and really interesting to see how everything is being handled. We've also had some really cute like romance stuff happening but also like terrible at the same time like the greatest like romance scene will happen in this book and you'll think yes this is it we're doing this things are good and then literally the next chapter something terrible will happen and it ruins everything so this series gives me whiplash and this book probably the most of them all i want to finish it 
tonight. It's Friday, so I'm sure I'll stay up later tonight and I kind of just want to finish it. I have three hours left in the audiobook, so definitely, definitely doable. And then I thought it would be fun to show you guys a little book haul. I went to Barnes & Noble today, of course. I actually haven't been to Barnes & Noble in like two or three weeks, I want to say, which is pretty good for me. I go to Barnes & Noble a lot. I think because one, it's literally so close to me. It's like two minutes away from me and I don't buy something every single time I go. Sometimes I just like to walk around, peruse, look at what's what's new. And also, you know, it's just something to do because we moved a few months ago and now we live like two hours away from our family and friends and I don't have any friends where we live. So it's a way to amuse myself. So just, you know, don't judge me for going to Barnes and Noble once a week, please. But I did pick up two books. So the first book I picked up, I'm so, so excited for and I'm going to read it next month and that is Rhapsodic by Laura Thalassa, the first book in the Bargainer series. I talked about maybe reading this in my April TBR. I wasn't sure though. I was just going to read it on my Kindle. I'm just really excited and I've been in more of like a physical book reading mood than my Kindle. I think because I read a lot on my Kindle this month that I'm kind of just like, I want to switch it up and read more physically. So I'm excited to read this. This is a, it's like a dark fae fantasy romance. So I'm really excited to see what I think of this. And then I decided to pick up the mini of Empire of Storms, a part of the Throne of Glass series. My Barnes & Noble always has these. They usually only have the latter half of the series. I've never seen a Throne of Glass or Crown of Midnight mini, but I always see this one, Air of Fire and Queen of Shadows. So I just decided to pick it up, but I think I'm going to start collecting these because I think they're really cute. And what I really like, each book features one of the characters and like highlights their name. So every single time that their name is mentioned, it'll be highlighted in whatever like the book color is. And I love the character that is highlighted in this. So this is a good one to start with. So got Empire of Storms, very cute. Don't think I'll ever actually physically read this. The pages are like Bible thin. They are so thin. I'm actually like afraid to open this book really, but it's just going to be like a cute bookshelf decoration. So I am going to check in with you guys when I have finished Shadow Princess and I hope to start Cursed Fates, the fifth book right after that and get some good reading done this weekend. All right, guys, time for another check-in. I think the last clip that you guys saw, last talking clip that you guys saw, I think I was wearing the pink sweatshirt, which means that I hadn't quite finished Shadow Princess, but I have now, so I did finish Shadow Princess that night. <sighs> And congratulations to this book because it is the first one in the series that made me cry. I cried like a little baby at three o'clock in the morning on this couch behind me. Oh my God, the ending of this book was so painful. There were two major events that happened at the end of this book that killed me, absolutely killed me. I just, yeah, this, this was rough. This was really, really rough. I loved it. I gave it five stars, but it was rough. And I was just so distraught after <laughs> I read this. One of the situations in particular, I'm like, what are we gonna do? What are we going to do? Like, I'm involving myself here. What are we gonna do, guys? How are we going to fix this? Because there are choices being made by characters and like, I get it, but I'm also like, come on. So I'm just, uh, the series puts you through it, seriously. Like I've seen so many people say that the series broke them and I'm starting to understand what that means. So I still loved it. It was still amazing, but definitely the most emotionally painful book in the series thus far. And then I think you guys saw after that, I just needed like a break from the series for like a day. So yesterday I didn't read it all. I did watch Hannah and Christina's Crown of Midnight live show because they are doing a Sarah J Mass read along where they're reading every single Sarah J Mass book this year, pretty much for the rest of the year. I think it goes almost to the end of the year. And I uh, I just love watching those live shows. I really loved to watch their read-alongs because Hannah is just like, she's the Sarah J Mass expert. She's read Throne of Glass, I think like five times. And so she's just, uh, I just love her so much. She's so cool. She has the best Sarah J Mass opinions. And like, I just, she's, she's the expert. She knows exactly what she's talking about. And then Christina has never read Throne of Glass. It's so fun to watch someone talk about Throne of Glass when they've never read it. And she's also avoided spoilers for the series, like up until 
until this point, which I think is crazy because I, when I read Throne of Glass for the first time, I barely knew what the series was and I had been spoiled for it. I had been spoiled on like relationships and plot lines and everything. So it's just really fun to watch them and I just love them so much. I've just been feeling so um, like really, really grateful lately just for the friends that I've made on booktube because it's so, so crazy how like you're, you know, things can change so quickly. Literally like what, like six months ago before I started this channel and you know, for years before that, I had nobody to talk about books with, literally nobody in my life. I mean, people, you know, like my parents, they read and stuff like that, but nobody reads the way I do. You know, like you get it, like being so obsessed with books, reading so much, as much as you can, like being a part of fandoms, understanding like significance of series and characters and fan art and Instagram, like just like all of that, you know, all of that. And like everything that comes along with booktube and like the conversations that are had and everything. And I didn't have that at all. Like I literally had nobody to talk about books with. And it's truly my greatest passion passion is reading and I feel the most like myself when I'm reading or talking about books. So it was hard to not be able to do that and express that or share that with anyone. And now like I have booktube friends who are just like me, who like love the same books as me. And even if we don't like the same books, like, we have those conversations and like they get it, you know? I don't know. It's just, it's really crazy. And I feel super just like lucky and so happy that I have the ability to share my passion with people. I don't know, it's so, so crazy. It's just, it's literally what I've wanted for so long. And I used to talk to Sean about this all the time where I was like, I just want friends who, oh my God, I'm like starting to get emotional. Whew, I'm, I'm about to start my period soon, so I'm gonna blame it on that. I used to tell Sean like, I just want friends who are into the same things as me. I just want friends who are into reading as much as I'm into reading, who get it, you know, who get me, who get, you know, my mindset when it comes to reading. I've met so many amazing people through the booktube community so far. So that is my little, did not expect to get emotional. Just wanted to give a shout out to my friends and to even like just, some of the people in the booktube community that I've had very brief interactions with have been so positive and wonderful. And like, even those interactions I've been like, they get it. And like, they're on the same wavelength as me. And so I'm just, I'm feeling really grateful on this Sunday afternoon. Anyway, let's stop with the emotions. Let's talk about Zodiac Academy. So I did start book five, Cursed Fates. Very, very nervous to read this one because I feel like this is a book that everyone says is the most painful. And I don't really know what that means. I don't really know what that entails. I was not expecting the ending of Shadow Princess. So I know that I'm just not gonna be able to even guess what's going to happen, but I am like only 33 pages into this book and I'm liking it so far. It's just like, everyone is in a bad place basically at this point. And it's funny because each book, even though we've had like, you know, cliffhangers and like very dramatic things happening at the end of books, people still in each book have been like keeping their spirits up, feeling positive and like whatever. And even when bad stuff happens, you know, there's there's still like a an air of positivity and optimism with the characters. And I'm feeling them kind of start to be drained by everything, as am I. It feels a lot more hopeless at this point. The issues they were having before seem so small in comparison to what's happening now. We literally don't know how they're going to get out of these situations and how relationships are going to be built back up and how like the dynamic between everyone is going to ever be okay because really detrimental things are now starting to happen and it's just oh it's so good though it's really really good i'm super super excited to read this also just like i have no idea when this vlog is going to be posted i wanted to have it done and posted last friday which is laughable at this point for me. These books are so long and they just keep getting longer. And also I really don't wanna rush through this series. I want to just enjoy it because this is the last time I'm going to be able to read this series for the first time, you know what I mean? I just, I'm enjoying it. I'm just basking in it. This vlog will come out whenever it comes out. It'll definitely be like late April or early May uh, because I do wanna finish this book book six and book seven, like in the next week, week and a half. It'll be out in a timely manner, but I'm definitely not gonna rush through it because it's a lot and I don't wanna miss anything. So I'm going to listen to the audiobook, clean the house, kind of get ready for the week because it's Sunday. I always like to clean the house on Sundays and, and kind of just like get refreshed and get ready for the week. So I will definitely check in with you guys before I finish this. I probably at like the 50 or 60% mark and let you know how it's going. Okay, hello guys, Um, quickly address. I am doing a coffee face mask right now. I have my Dunder Mifflin t-shirt on. We're thriving, if anyone is curious. I'm using the um, Cup O Coffee, is that what it's called? Yeah, Cup of Coffee face and body mask from Lush, 10 out of 10, recommend. Literally, really, really good. Kind of wakes you up because it smells so 
caffeinated. Anyway, I wanted to do like a really quick book check-in because I have like almost finished this book and I've barely checked in. Last clip you guys saw, I think I was 30 pages in and this is a really big book. So that was barely anything. I only have four hours of the audiobook left. So I'm like, I'm going. I've increased my speed on the audiobook. I'm listening to it at like three, uh, not three. I was about to say 3.8. Can you imagine? I'm listening to the audiobook at 2.8 speed now, which is the fastest I've loved ever listened to an audiobook. So that's been really cool. And so I'm getting close to the end. This isn't even like accurate. I haven't moved my bookmark in a really long time, but I'm getting nervous because I know we're getting towards the end. And as I said, in the beginning of this book, everyone was really like down in the dumps. Things were bad. Things were sad because of the aftermath of book four, but things have been getting better and people have kind of been growing. I've seen a ton of character growth in this book. I will say really liked that. Comparing these characters to who they were in book one is just like, different people. It's really, really cool. But I know things can't be this good forever. <laughs> and I'm really scared to see how the ending goes. But oh, this book has had a lot of really, really good moments. Chapter 23 of book five. Excuse me? Was not expecting that. Very much happy it happened. Like, I was... I was not ready. I was absolutely not ready for that. Also, I did just want to say, I forgot to mention this when I was reading Shadow Princess, but there was a new character introduced in Shadow Princess who we're supposed to trust, but I don't. And I don't know if I'm being like too, you know, too playing detective here, but for some reason I do not trust them. I feel like they are just too, like, things are a little too perfect with them. I don't know, I'm, I'm getting bad vibes. I could be completely off base here, but I'm not trusting that character and I'm very curious to see what role they play in the overall story because things just seem a little suspicious there. But otherwise, I have really enjoyed this story. As I said, a lot of character development, a lot of growth, and some really happy moments have happened so far in this book. But I know, I know it's not gonna stay that way because Caroline and Suzanne will not let us have any peace, not a single moment. Or if they do let us have a moment of peace, it's quickly bulldozed. And I just know, especially the last 100 pages of this book is not, it's not gonna be good. You know how I know this? So at the beginning of every single chapter they have these really beautiful darker uh, pages in the beginning and so you can kind of see like in the, I don't know if you guys can see this but you can see like oh where there's a new chapter beginning and if you see at the end it's there's a lot of those black pages because I think we're gonna be switching POVs a lot quicker at the end of the book because the chapters are like a decent length you know throughout the book but then at the end they get really short to switch between like everyone's POV of what's going on so I know the fact that there are so many of these darker pages at the end means that that some ish is going to go down and I am not ready. I'm absolutely not ready. I might finish this tonight. I haven't decided. It depends on how tired I am or I'm just gonna finish it like tomorrow morning. Anyway, I just want to check in with you guys, let you know that I am on, uh, almost done with book five and tomorrow is the beginning of Spring fling Ween. So I am gonna be putting down the Zodiac Academy series just for a little bit. You guys will not see any of that though. I will have a separate vlog out for Spring fling Ween, and then I will probably, you know, I'll try to continue on with the Zodiac Academy books because the books that I'm reading for Spring fling Ween are pretty short. So I think I'll be able to kind of multitask. But anyway, I will talk to you guys once I have finished this beast. just finished this and 
what? This was horrible. It was really good, but the ending was so bad. Okay, hi guys. Uh, as you will have just seen, I was a mess. I like went away from my book and from like everything for like 30 minutes and calmed down for a little bit. And now I am back to give some type of wrap up on Cursed Fates. I'm giving this book five stars. I don't know if I have mentioned that already. I am giving this book five stars. I loved it, but I feel like the worst possible thing that could have happened in this book happened at the end of this book. I feel like the ending of this book, it's worse. It's not even like, I, I don't even know. It's bad. It's really, really, really bad. And it honestly pisses me off. Like I'm angry at this book at this point. I'm so angry. I'm really afraid for the next book because there's a certain thing that I'm afraid is going to happen now that I'm really, really not going to like. And I will honestly think is really disgusting if they go that route. I don't know if they're going to go that route. Like if they would dare to do such a thing, you know, if you've read this book, you know, if you don't, this isn't making any sense, but I'm just like stream of consciousness right now, just trying to get my thoughts out. Also, God, there's so many horrible things happened in this book. Horrible. This book, like, it was great, but it was horrible at the same time. I don't know. And just, I have zero hope at this point. I have zero hope for the next two books. I'm going to read the sixth book this weekend, and then I'll read book seven at the beginning of next week, and then I'll be done with this vlog. And then the very last book in the series comes out in December. I don't know how I'm going to wait that long because I'm sure that the seventh book has a really bad cliffhanger too, and now I'm actually going to have to wait to find out what happens. But I'm just praying that the big thing that happens at the end of this book gets resolved in book six. I really hope that we do not have to endure this situation for a long time in the next book. Like I really, really hope that there's some way that that gets fixed. It's literal torture thinking about it. I loved it. There were a lot of great things happening in this book as I've said, as I've talked about it so far, some really sweet and amazing things happened in this book. And then just like none of that even matters now at this point. I feel like, I feel like my energy too is like, I'm not like mad at the book, but I am kind of mad. Like I'm just kind of mad about the way that things have gone because it's literally the worst possible thing in my opinion that could happen at this point in the series has happened. So that's where we are with the Zodiac Academy series, but I loved it. It was so good at the same time, like it was so good. And any book that can bring that type of really strong emotion out of me, I'm going to love. I'm going to definitely be thinking about this book for a long time, but I'm just, I'm exhausted. I'm mentally exhausted. So today is the first day of Spring Fling Aween and I'm going to be switching over and reading some horror, even though I literally feel like I just read a horror novel because the most horrific thing ever happened in this book. I am going to just take a little break from Zodiac Academy. I'm going to just relax a little bit, have a nice calm night, do some self-care while I read my horror books because I'm just, I really need it. I'm really just like emotionally fragile. I will talk to you guys when I've picked up the sixth book in the Zodiac Academy series. Book six, you guys, we are on book six, Fated Throne. Can you believe it? I, I truly cannot. I have been making this video forever, for my entire life, I feel like, and I cannot believe that we are finally on book six. We have one and three quarters of a book to go until I am fully and completely broken. I cannot wait. Okay, so first things first, obviously I am wearing this super cute Zodiac Academy Pit Ball crew neck. I got this from Etsy along with Hannah, Cami, Kirsten. I imagine Christina will get one at some point because she's fully obsessed with the series as well. And the only other person who hasn't got one yet is Sahar, but we're working on her. We're trying to make her a full Zodiac Academy girly. She's, I mean, she is a Zodiac girl, but like she's not fully like, invested as the rest of us are in the series, which is okay, but sh she's gonna fall in love with it. I know it, I absolutely know it. So because we are all really obsessed with the series, we decided to buy matching crew necks as one does. And I think they're super cute. This is probably gonna be my uniform for the rest of the video. So love that. And I just love buying bookish clothes. Like I've never really done that before, but I bought this, I bought two Crescent City shirts. I bought a Folk of the Air shirt. Like I'm I'm in it. I'm My new wardrobe is bookish clothes and I'm happy about it. Also, I don't I don't know if I've mentioned it in this video yet because I'm filming like four videos right now. I'm getting over being sick, but my voice sounds kind of disgusting. So I apologize if it's distracting. 
annoying. If it's annoying, I understand. My voice just sounds kind of rough and kind of like I'm going through puberty. So my deepest apologies there, but I'm feeling a lot better today. So that is why I wanted to get on camera and provide a reading update for you guys. So as I said, we are on book six, Faded Throne. This book does have my zodiac sign on the front, Aquarius, the water bearer, which I was hoping would mean that this would be my favorite book, but there's no possible way that this can be my favorite book in the series because this book has been torture to read so far. By the way, every time I say it's like bad or torturous to read one of these books or a part of one of these books, I mean that in like an emotional way. I'm still loving it, but this book has been pain, just absolutely full of pain. And so obviously something happened at the end of, you know, the fifth book and you guys all saw that. I was crying and whatever. And I thought like, oh, probably within the first 100 pages, it will get resolved, right? Because I feel like that's usually what happens when there's like a cliffhanger in a series, the next book, there's usually like within the first 100 pages, things are okay. Well, no, that's, that's not happening because I am on page 100 and 59 and things are still horrible, which is great. Love it so much. And I just, I don't know. I have no idea how we are going to get out of the situation that we are in. As I said in uh, my last clip, like literally in my opinion, this is the worst thing that could happen in the series. Worst, like I don't even wanna try to compare it to other things because I don't wanna give away any spoilers at all. But in my opinion, this is the worst thing that could happen because it's just so screwed up. It's so, so screwed up. However, I will say there is one cute thing happening. We're kind of getting the sort of beginnings of of a potential new romance in this book, which I'm really excited for. I hope nothing goes wrong with that, but knowing this series, I'm sure something terrible is gonna happen with that as well. But I am enjoying my reading experience regardless. I'm hoping to get like halfway through the book today. I have like, I think six hours of my audiobook left. I will probably finish this book today or tomorrow. And then we are starting book seven, you guys. Oh my God, my hope, I'm just gonna say this right now. I need to put this out into the universe. I wanna have this book out next Tuesday. So a week from today. I am as, as um, painful as the series is, I am like kind of getting sad that it's going to be ending soon and the last book doesn't come out until December because this is literally basically all I've been reading for the past month and I don't know what I'm going to do with myself. Like part of me is like, oh my god, I can't wait for this to be over because like it's such an emotional read and like I'm just ready to get onto something light and fluffy. Then the other part of me is like, what am I going to do? What am I going to do without this crew? You know? Oh god, it's going to be such a long wait to December. I just wanted to check in with you guys. Things are going bad and I have absolutely no idea how we're going to fix it. So that is my review for Cursed what is this called? For Faded Throne at the moment. I will check in with you guys when I'm a little bit farther into this book and let you know my thoughts. All right, guys, time for another reading update for Faded Throne book six. I am on page 471 of 640. So I have less than 200 pages and my audiobook says I have about two hours exactly left to go, which is terrifying, honestly. I can't believe I am that close to finishing it. I will absolutely be finishing this in the next, hopefully like by five o'clock. I think it's like one right now. So definitely, you know, in the next few hours while I am working, I'm gonna be listening to this book and hopefully finishing it. So we have had some good progress, definitely. There were obviously some major issues happening in the first part of this book. They have been partially resolved, not fully, but partially, so that is good. And uh, there have been so many cute romantic scenes in this book, oh my God. So many great things for multiple couples, which I've really, really enjoyed. We've had like small little moments and then we've had like very big proclamation, just like amazing things happening. So absolutely loving that. I will definitely say this series is the romance and the spice is slow burn. Like I don't even know if the first book has any spice. It does have like that one scene I think in the beginning but yeah the first book is definitely like not spicy at all but definitely it's like very gratifying once you get to the later books it gets wild it gets crazy I, I've absolutely loved it and it's been fun that it's like slowly happened and kind of slowly you know unraveled and now we just have all of these beautiful relationships going on I love it I don't imagine that they're all gonna stay together because I mean I've already seen multiple couples break up and like whatever also I just need to say I need to apologize to Geraldine because I could not stand her in the first book I was like not on the Geraldine train at all and now I am fully on board. She is such a good friend. She's a little over enthusiastic. She's a little much. Her energy is completely different than mine but I appreciate her. She's such a good friend. She rides for her friends no matter what. She's so loyal and so kind and so caring. I love her so much now. She is just like she is the true definition of a great great friend and also 
I have turned around a little bit on Sethi, if you can believe. I'm still not in love with him. He's still like definitely my least favorite of the heirs, but I've realized in this book, he is just an idiot, but he's a lovable idiot. You know, he is charming me a little bit. I saw some people saying that in some of the earlier books, like in books three and four, they were starting to like Seth. And I was like, in what world? What book are you reading? Because I am not reading the same book as you. I couldn't stand him in the beginning. And basically up until this book, I really did not like him. But now I'm just starting to see like, oh, you know, he's kind of a golden retriever. You know what I mean? A very dumb golden retriever, but he's kind of a golden retriever. That is good news. I'm starting to warm up to him, which I never thought would happen. So this book is, it's changing lives out here. It's pretty amazing. As I said, want to finish this book today and immediately start Heartless Sky, the last book, you guys. We are moving on to the last book very, very soon here. I have had so much fun making this vlog. I know it's not like the end or anything, but like I've had so much fun making this vlog and reading vlogs are something that I still am like trying to get comfortable with. And I just have to like allow myself to, you know, just, I, I have to remind myself, I have only had a booktube channel for four months, okay? I've only been doing this for four months and even before that, I've never filmed myself, I've never talked to a camera. So like if I'm awkward or if like I'm just not really making sense, you know, I just, I, I'm trying to like give myself some grace because this vlog has been really fun to make and I've definitely seen like my progress in the way that I'm able to talk on camera about books in reading vlogs specifically. It's progressed a lot in this vlog versus like other vlogs that I've made in the past. So I'm having a lot of fun with this one. I'm really, really proud of this vlog and I can't wait for you guys to see it and um it's just been it's been a journey watching like as i'm editing this video and watching like my emotions just be all over the place for, throughout the vlog has been super super fun also in regards to like editing in this vlog and everything in the earlier clips where i'm crying i just think that's funny like that's why i put that in there because i think i'm kind of an ugly crier and i just think it's like funny and like i'm just like so dramatic because i'm literally crying over a fantasy book but yeah i hope that you guys are like you guys know that i'm not like literally like oh poor me or anything like that i think it's hilarious i think it's hilarious you know that i'm ugly crying about this series so i just wanted to make that clear like let you guys know i'm laughing at myself when i do that and putting it in this video for your entertainment so i hope that you enjoy i'm going to be starting heartless sky tonight I'm gonna try to get as much of it read as i can before mother's day this weekend i have to go home it's like a two-hour trip and i don't know how much reading i'm going to get done once i am home because we have a lot of people to see so I will definitely going to push myself to get this video out on Tuesday. Today is Friday. I can do it. I know that I can do it. So we, we will see how that goes, but hopefully you guys will be seeing this on Tuesday. So anyway, going to be finishing this book very, very soon in the next couple of hours. I will check in with you guys when I'm done and I'm sure I will be you know, crying, angry, depressed, probably all of the above. So I will talk to you guys soon and let you guys know how the ending of this book went. So I just finished book six. I'm numb. Honestly, I'm numb at this point. I don't even, I don't even know what to say. I really don't. Um, yeah. Yeah. I feel exhausted. <laughs> I feel exhausted. I feel exhausted mentally, physically. Honestly, reading this book is like physically challenging as well for some reason. I don't know, guys. In an interesting turn of events, I did rate this book four stars instead of five stars. T. The only reason I did that is, well, I don't even really know. It just doesn't feel like a five star, but I, I loved it. Don't get me wrong. It was great. I can't quite pinpoint to why it's not a five star, but it just didn't give me that five star feeling. When you know it, you know. I feel like if I had to guess the reason why I'm rating this a little bit lower is because of that thing that happened at book five played out throughout this entire book, that thing that I really didn't like. One of our characters, there's tons of characters, okay? Tons of main characters in this book, but one of our characters was not themselves in this book, I'm gonna say. And that I think was just not fun to read. I think just that thing going on lessened my enjoyment of the book because it was it was horrible to read about like I hated that so much and I wish I could go into why I hated that but I don't want to give away any spoilers at all it was just not enjoyable to read about and I was just like come on like let's get past this because I just can't stand reading about this thing and these people and whatever that might be it that might be why I gave it a four star but honestly I'm numb I don't even I don't even know what to say, you guys. Of course, in classic Zodiac Academy fashion, uh, something horrendous once again happened at the end of this book. Multiple things. One thing that we've been kind of left in the dark about, we don't really know what are going to be the repercussions of it. I know it's gonna be bad. It's gonna be very bad. 
but we have no idea what it is. And the other thing, oh, we know what it is. We know what the repercussions of that are. And I am just like, okay, sure. You know, I'm like, what, what else do you guys got? You can throw out anything at me at this point. Like I'm just, I should have seen that coming. You know what I mean? Like, of course we're gonna do that. Of course we're gonna do that. Of course, why wouldn't we? Why wouldn't we add that in at the end? So, <laughs> oh my God. That's my review of this. That's my spoiler free review of this book. I'm just numb, you guys, as, as I said earlier, I'm exhausted. I feel like deflated, you know? I'm just kind of like, okay, all right, sure, you know? awesome. What I think I am going to do, because I just want to start book seven. I'm feeling really motivated to start book seven. I finished this book at 4.59 today, exactly. The audiobook, I already have it downloaded for book seven. And on the speed that I'm listening to it now, it says I will finish it in like 10 and a half hours. So I'm kind of like, that's not that long. I don't know. I feel like I could maybe make some headway tonight. So I think I want to go to the gym just to like work out some of my frustrations, honestly, of the Zodiac Academy book, then I kind of want to start Heartless Sky tonight. Even if I just get like an hour into the audiobook or whatever, I just want to like get it started. I will say though, there is one thing about the way that this book ended that I really, really like, and it's going to be something like different for the whole crew. So I'm excited to see where that goes. Also, this book feels like it is the second to last book in the series. It's really weird. I almost wonder if book seven was supposed to be the last book, but then some they like got another idea for the ending. So they decided to add in an eighth book. Also in the author's note, they make it sound like there's only one more book left. They don't say that explicitly, but like that's kind of the way that they make it sound is there's only one book left after this. But obviously we all know that uh, Zodiac Academy 8 is coming out in December and that is gonna be the finale. So yeah, tonight I'm gonna go to the gym. I need to edit the clips that I filmed today for my Zodiac Academy vlog, get that all up to date and definitely gonna take a bubble bath, do some skincare de-stress and uh, just try to feel any semblance of happiness. So I will check in with you guys after I've started Heartless Sky and let you know how it's going. So time for my very first reading update for book seven, Heartless Sky. I think the last clip that you saw me in, I had gone home for Mother's Day weekend. I didn't get a lot of reading done this weekend, just was spending time with family, um, but I'm back better than ever, ready to knock this book series out. The only thing standing in my way is of course this like 800 page monstrosity of a book. So I'm currently on page 183. So I'm like, I feel like I've barely made a dent in it, honestly. And this book has been very, very different from the other books in the series thus far, even though something crazy has happened in every single book, basically. We have kind of like different locations, different uh, challenges that the characters are going through, and just like everyone is kind of in a state of disarray, more than usual. As of right now, I am still kind of in the dark about a couple of things that are going on. There's still like this big, horrible secret that has not been revealed to the characters, but we as the reader know it, and it is just torture to read about those scenes concerning those characters and just like I'm waiting for the other shoe to drop you know what I mean so I think I am just going to power through and finish the rest of this series. I don't think I'm going to be filming another update. I am just ready to get to the end of this. I love this series as a whole. Like, don't get me wrong. I'm not speaking negatively about it. I sort of touched on this earlier. I am just exhausted. I have never read a book series that has put me through so much emotional turmoil. And like, I mean that. Like, I've read really sad books before. I have read books that have made me cry and made me angry and all of that, but it's usually been like standalones. This book series has just just been one thing after another after another and it really has taken an emotional toll on me and I am just like ready I'm ready to be done with this book just to like give my brain a break basically but then I'm also kind of sad that the series is ending for now obviously the last book comes out in December it's been a really fun experience reading this series I'm just like I can't believe all of the things that have happened and I'm just kind of ready to get to the end of this book and just rip the band-aid off and like whatever happens happens and see you know see see where everyone ends up, probably 
terrible, but um, I'm, I'm just ready. I'm ready for it. So I think, as I said, this will be the last time I update before I finish book seven and gonna be a doozy. I am actually gonna try to power through and finish this today, like stay up all night and read it because I just, I need to know. I need to know the ending. I need to know what is going to happen and just finish this book once and for all. So I will check in with you guys when I have finished book seven, Heartless Sky. Hey guys, editing me, popping in very quickly. In the next clip, you are going to see me do my final thoughts on book seven of the Zodiac Academy series. And the clip is unfortunately just like slightly blurry just a tiny tiny bit my camera decided to focus on anything else other than me so you can get a perfectly clear shot of nesta and cassian they're back on my bookshelf but you won't be seeing me like super super crystal clear it's not that bad it's very small but i did want to explain it because i decided to not refilm it and the reason being like i just can't i cannot muster up the will to re-record my thoughts on this book i'm exhausted i am tired i just can't do it anymore you will see in the next clip why i feel this way but uh, i just wanted to let you guys know that i apologize if it's annoying, but it is a very, very slight blur. It's not going to affect your enjoyment of the clip at all. Thank you guys so much for watching this and enjoy the rest of the video. All right, guys, I have finished book seven of the Zodiac Academy series, Heartless Sky. <sighs> wow, we made it. I didn't think we would there towards the end. It was getting a little rough, but we have made it. I have finished this series for now until the last book comes out in December. So... <laughs> This is probably gonna be like a very different update from every single update I've given so far because I gave this book three stars. I had some issues with this book, with the structure of the plot. Overall, just did not love this book as much as the others. Basically, I mean, my overall thoughts are now that I finished the latest book that is out and I look at the series as a whole, I feel like the overarching plot of this entire series has not been handled super well and I feel like we were just grasping at straws towards the end of it. I feel like we were throwing things at the wall, seeing what would stick. It just got to be so convoluted. There are plot points in this book that do make sense. They make sense from what happened in the, the last book, but I would also argue that the sixth book kind of suffered from just, I feel like we're trying to extend this series longer than we need to. You know what I mean? My biggest critique of this series now, particularly the latter half, is these books are too long and there are too many of them. I think they either could have been condensed to be shorter books, and then if you really want to have like seven or eight books in the series, just yeah, just make them shorter. Or you could have just shortened the series as a whole and made this like a five or six book series because basically what happened in this book is I feel like we were dragged through the mud for being dragged through the mud's sake, if that makes sense. I'm just like, I'm tired of it. I'm really tired of it and I was into it. I was into for the past several books. I've been into like the crazy endings and the dramatics and everything like that. But now it just feels like it's not making sense. You know, it's not um, the, the purpose of why these things are happening isn't super clear to me at this point anymore. And it just feels like we're doing this for the sake of the dramatics and to continue on and have an eighth book in the series. That really sucks. There were definitely in the earlier parts of the series, very justifiable, crazy things, but I just feel like we kind of should have played off of that and let those storylines played out and then wrap this series up a little bit sooner. Like it just felt like every single turn there was just like, okay, here's another terrible thing. Here's another terrible thing. Like, oh, what's another terrible thing that we can think of to include just to make this book more painful? And it's not even coming from a place of like, I'm not enjoying the emotional sort of turmoil that I go through reading this book because I, I do like that. I love when a book elicits strong emotions from me, whether good, bad, ugly, like whatever but this just felt like I wasn't buying it. You know what I mean? I'm not buying the dramatic plot twists anymore. Like I'm just, I'm, I'm over it. There is also kind of a, there's a character who is, in my opinion, sort of being used as a plot device and just kind of to move the plot forward. And that's okay. A lot of authors do that. We see that in a lot of series. Like it's not the end of the world, but it's getting so repetitive with that character. And it's so blatantly clear that like this character exists solely to move the plot along. And it's boring in my opinion. <laughs> I did like this book though. Like I, it's, I feel so, so, I just feel very complex feelings about this book. There were some really amazing, beautiful things that happened in this book. There were some really sweet moments. And like, once again, we got some answers to some things that we were wondering about earlier on. And there was some uh, exciting like romance things for sure. But like, 
at what cost? You know what I mean? <laughs> like at what cost? And I just think that the blatant intent to drag out the series to make these super long books, it's just feeling like this is going to sound harsh, but I feel like it's cheapening the series overall. I feel like we are doing too much. Too much is happening here. And like, you know, obviously once again, this book ended in multiple big cliffhangers. And like one of them, I'm just like, I don't even, I don't even care. I'm not buying it anymore. So that's also why I think that this book series should have been shorter or the books themselves should have been shorter because it's just like, I'm, you're losing me. You know, you're losing me now. My attention is waning. Like I'm just not, I'm not as into it as I was in the first half, which makes me so sad. I think back to when I read book three, that is still my favorite in the series. And I was in love. I thought that that book was so fun. I really think books like three, four, and five are a great section of the series. And I also love books one and two just for like, we were just babes in the woods reading books one and two, honestly. And once again, I don't want to sound like I hate this book because I don't. I'm just over it. And by it, I mean the repetitive sort of formulaic structure of this book, I guess you could say. So that's how I feel. <laughs> um, I am happy that I have finished the series. Like, I can't believe it. I have been working on this vlog for weeks now. I thought I was going to get this vlog out a few days ago. That didn't happen. But truly, another reason why this has taken me a while to get this video out is this book was kind of hard to get through. My love for the characters is being overshadowed by just how messy this book is and not a fun messy. So um, I am really happy, though, that I've read this entire series and I am excited to read the finale of the series in December. I think it's going to be really good. I do think we're going to get a happily ever after um if we don't like I, I don't even know what I'm gonna do at that point but I am excited to just kind of be done with the series and take a break and I haven't binged a series like this in probably like a year like I haven't read this long of a series this fast in quite a long time and it is fun but it does also kind of get tiring so I am ready to like put the series down and just go back to kind of my regularly scheduled reading plans overall I would say I did really enjoy the series as a whole I would probably rate the series like a four star like in totality. I will stick by what I said when I read book one. This series is like the Vampire Diaries, not in the content at all, but the Vampire Diaries TV show is, you know, doesn't have the best writing. Some of the acting is cringe. Some of the scenes are cringe, whatever, but like it's, it's addicting and you have a lot of fun. And that is what I would say about this series. It's not going to change your life. It's not like amazing writing. I understand people's critiques, but I had a really good time with it. I just didn't take it that seriously. And I went in with very, very low and open expectations expectations and I was very pleasantly surprised that I just find this series very addicting, very bingeable, very dramatic, and just so much fun. So overall, I definitely recommend this series. I just, things just got to be a little bit too much for me at the end. I have had such a good time making this vlog. I really hope that you guys enjoyed watching it. If you have made it to this point in the video, number one, I love you. And number two, go ahead and leave your zodiac sign down in the comments below. You can use the little emoji. There's like that set of purple emojis with all the zodiac symbols on them, or you can just write it if you want to. I hope that you guys have an amazing day. Thank you so, so much for watching this video, and I will catch you guys in the next one.